morning everyone and welcome back to the daily bible reading show i am right in front of king's college and <laughs> there's cleaning street cleaning happening right in front of me so i'm not sure if you can hear uh the noise there and also some ducks <laughs> I sent you a couple of ducks today. They might come along the way uh, and, and interrupt me in between. But barring all that, uh, thank you for joining me. This is the Daily Bible Weeding Show. My name is Calvin and this is live from Cambridge, as you can see over there. Yeah, check it out. So it is Sunday morning. Uh, I am reading 1 Peter chapter 3 today. Um, and I'll begin with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much that we can come to you and hear your word. And we can hear your voice speaking to us through Christ. So please would you enable us to hear, to listen, and to obey. Help us to treasure this word that we have in the gospel. And help us to apply it to our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hi ducks. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Let's have a look at 1 Peter and chapter 3. <laughs> Sorry, it's really kind of noisy, but yeah, there you go. That's Cambridge. Uh, wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Verse 8, finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you are called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer but the face of the lord is against those who do evil but who, uh, who is going to harm you verse 13 who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good but even if you should suffer for what is right you are blessed do not fear what they fear and do not be frightened but in your hearts set apart christ as lord always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom he also went and preached to the spirits in prison, who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission 
to him. Yeah, there you go. That's uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Sorry again about the noise. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's street cleaning going on at the same time. Right now it's 6.30 in the morning. And so I guess it's a good time to be cleaning the streets. Um, yeah, really deep cleaning. I wonder where they... Actually, they might not be cleaning. They might be digging through the road. Yeah, there you go. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 talks about... Well, talks to Christians about suffering suffering as Christians and he, he walks through different scenarios uh, different scenarios of people who are suffering as Christians specific scenarios so he dealt a lot specifically with slaves yesterday in chapter 2 you know slaves you know who do not have rights who could be mistreated by their masters and he says you know suffer you know as Christians not for disobeying your master but just as Christ suffered so you too may suffer as a Christian slave. So that's a very real scenario, at least in Peter's day. But then he also talks to wives. So he continues through that trend, you know, Christians who suffer, he talks to wives. And here he's talking to wives whose husbands aren't Christians, you know, whose husbands may not share that Christian faith, but somehow during the course of their marriage, you know, these wives have come to know Christ. And, you know, and therefore it's tough. It's tough for them to carry on that relationship but you know live continue to live you know as wives in submission to your husbands especially as Christian wives and so there is a kind of um, already already a kind of direct application to the day you know, it's the situations where it's just difficult for you to become a Christian you know especially if you know your spouse does not share that faith and it's really tragic therefore it's not therefore an advice <laughs> for you to go out and look for non-christian future life partners but it is a reality that you know half the church you know will be women and half the church will uh, have um, women uh, well, who are not men sorry that's kind of obvious but therefore will have to live out their submission as part of their Christian faith and especially if they're wives and especially uh, if they become a Christian uh, in a marriage, they started out not as Christians, but then they became Christians in their marriage, and therefore they are the only Christian in their, that marriage. And, and, and Peter says to them, um, da, 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 chapter 3, Be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they are not Christians, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. So there is a kind of evangelistic aspect to their lives that is lived out for Christ in their marriage before their husbands. They almost live out the gospel and he attracts them to the gospel. Uh, husbands, in the same way, he speaks to them in verse 7, be considerate as you live with your wives. And now he's speaking to Christian husbands. You see, you know, here, you know, so it's, it's kind of similar but different. You know, he's speaking to Christian husbands. Hey, look at those wives over there who have to submit to their non-Christian husbands. Make sure you don't act like the non-Christian husbands. You should be different, even more different than them. You should be even more loving, even more sacrificial. You know, he says, and treat them as respect as the weaker partner, verse 7, and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life. And he adds, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. I find that very convicting. You know, Peter's always slipping in this kind of caveat, saying, you know, God, you know, will, will, will be almost listening to your prayers based on your love towards your life, to, towards your wife. You know, it does not hinder your prayers. It does not hinder God from hearing your prayers because you've not been as loving as you should be to your wives. So there you go, to Christian wives, but also to Christian husbands. But finally, he speaks to all of us. Verse 8, finally, all of you, all of you. What does he say to all of us? Therefore, live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. But then he moves on to talk about our suffering. Verse 13, who's going to harm you if you're eager to do good? But if, even if you should suffer for what is right, you're blessed. So you see, he progresses on to specific case, test cases of suffering within the church, slaves, wives, but then he talks to us, you know, all of us as Christians. There will be that identity of suffering as Christians because we follow a suffering Messiah. And it's suffering for what is right that causes us to be blessed. This kind of blessing that comes that displays, you know, Christ's kind of suffering 
when we respond in that same way. So it's talking. How, well, how does it apply to us? Well, two things. Number one, as a Christian, you will suffer. <laughs> it's almost saying that, you know, because you follow suffering Christ, you will suffer. Expect it. Do not be too surprised by it. Do not be too discouraged by it. But secondly, how will you respond? You know, he keeps saying again, respond with good. Respond not with retaliation. He says that to the slaves. Respond with good behavior, with submission. He says that to the wives. And now he says to all of us, how will you respond when you are suffering? Not if, but will you suffer as someone who's just standing on your own rights? You possibly could. But even better is to respond as someone who's blessing rather than cursing when you are uh, being cursed when you're suffering as a Christian. Verse uh, 13, Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, verse 15, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. Now prepare this answer because every, someone's going to see you respond in this way. In this way that is submissive, that is trusting towards God. You're separating God, Christ, in your heart as you suffer, as you think to you, you say in Chinese. But you say, why is it that you're responding this way? It's so unusual. It is, you know, it makes sense if you retaliated, if you got angry, if you wanted to fight for your rights, but you're not doing that. Why are you doing that? And then, then there's that opportunity to answer, to give that hope that you have in Christ alone. But he says this, do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. So that's really interesting because it means the people who are asking, hey, give us a reason, is not just people who admire you. It's not just people who go, hey, you know, you're, you, you're such a good Christian, but people who might be persecuting you say, why is it that as I'm kicking you, as I'm making a big fuss about you, as I'm insulting your faith, you're not retaliating, but you're you know, gentle. You're trusting in God even more. And you're saying to them, and you're saying to them in a very gentle and a respectful way, so that when you answer them these questions, they may be convicted of their slander. He says, you know, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. And he's talking about things that they say against you, maybe behind your back, things that they say to you about your faith. But then the moment they say that, they go, hey, you know, this guy, it's not just something I'm saying against him, I'm saying we've got this God. And this guy is responding in a way that is even more loving, that's maybe even a blessing towards me. And it's kind of like a shame that comes towards that, that makes them more ashamed about their sin and helps them to see Jesus, perhaps Jesus, as their savior. And yeah, you know, I'll end there because I know the next bit is kind of difficult if Christ going back, you know, to the spirits <laughs> during the times of Noah and preach to the spirits, it says in verse 19, in prison, you know, uh, who disobeyed long ago and God waited patiently, verse 20, in the days of Noah. I have no idea what that's talking about. So, uh, well, it could be, it could be that, you know, it's talking about how Noah Know, who preached the gospel during his time of building the ark was calling to repentance the people around him and there's an element which by, by Christ was preaching to Noah Christ was preaching to the Old Testament Christ was preaching to the prophets the same gospel that we have now but not everyone responded in fact it says there are only a few people eight in all who were saved through water he says and then he connects it to us there's the same water of baptism that saves us it's a picture of Christ's death and resurrection that we die with Christ in the waters of baptism we are raised with him in the resurrection sorry more noise because there's more street cleaning but yeah it talks to again to this situation today as Christians where we may suffer and speak to a preach to a unrepented generation as Noah did and so speaking again to Christians who are suffering unjustly, suffering as Christians and suffering in speaking the gospel of Christ. Okay, all right, I'm going to move. <laughs> let's move a bit further here and let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this reminder for us to live out our faith, especially in the face of suffering. Help us not just to 
live out our faith well, but to even suffer well. To suffer as Christians uh, who will always proclaim the gospel to our trust in you, to our submission to you in the face of suffering. And help us to be ready with that answer. You tell us to be ready with that answer, especially when you're questioned as to why we have this hope. And when we do give that answer, to do it respectfully and gently, so that those who even malign us and malign Christ might be ashamed of their behavior, might see Christ as their Savior, and might put their trust in Him and Him alone. <laughs> we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there you go. Uh, sorry for a very busy morning. Uh, oh, actually, let me, have, let me have a look at the ducks here. So have a good Sunday morning. Enjoy your day, especially today in church. And thank you for joining me today at the Daily Bible Reading Show. I'll see you again possibly very soon. Once I sort out that audio issue, I'll see you again soon as you look at more of the Bible together. Take care and God bless. And bye-bye.